entering the facility. My eighth grade science teacher, Mr. D, liked to start off every class with a tricky question for all of us to get our adolescent brains a-brewing. One day, I remember this very clearly, he asked the following question. What was the first human-made object to break the sound barrier and cause a sonic boom? He said, it wasn't a fighter jet, and it wasn't a bullet, and it was, Kevin, stop horsing around back there. Insubordinate and churlish. My point is, it's not what you first expect. Well, eighth grade me on that day, I raised my hand and I said, well, what about the end of a bullwhip? Isn't that crack something supersonic? Well, this just happened to be the right answer. I nailed it and I've, I've been trying to chase that high uh, every day since then. How do you translate some very subsonic hand movements into something supersonic? And once we know those physics, can we apply them to an ordinary bullwhip to make it a little bit more, hmm, robust and super, super dangerous if you've read the title of this video? Well, follow me. Haha, <laughs> adventure. First, following in the footsteps of my beloved science teacher, I have a tricky question for you. Suppose I have a loop of chain, I'm holding the end of it, and in my other hand I'm holding a quarter because I'm stupid rich. I hold them both at the exact same height and then drop them at the exact same time under the same local gravitational acceleration. I ask you, which will hit the ground first, the end of that chain or the coin? Well, if you perform this little experiment, you will see that the end of the chain actually accelerates faster in free fall than the coin does. That's weird. And I've seen this effect highlighted in physics papers and the like, but never with a name. And I'm the one making the video here, so I'm gonna call this the Hill Effect. Really? <laughs> yeah, seriously. The Hill Effect is the tendency of the end of a non-rigid, continuous object to accelerate faster in free fall than is otherwise dictated by the local gravitational acceleration. It just seems a bit egotistical. Yeah, I know. I just want to live forever in obscure science textbooks. That costs too much money. <laughs> egotistical. Okay. Okay. The Hill Effect. Show it. The Hill Effect is a consequence of the conservation of energy in this universe, and it explains how a simple flick of the wrist can be translated into a tremendous sonic snap. Now, as you may know, things that move have some energy associated with that movement, more specifically energy of the kinetic flavoring, <laughs> defined as one half times the mass of that object times the velocity of that object squared. Now, realistically, when we have a whip and you flick it, and flick it good, that whip is going to lose energy as air resistance and friction takes over during the movement, but theoretically, any energy that you give a whip in the beginning should be the same amount of energy it has at the end. So consider a whip being flicked. You now have some portion of mass moving down, propagating in a wave type motion down the whip. But what's critical to notice here is that the mass of the whip is decreasing along the whip. It's tapered so that you have the least mass right at the very end. If energy is to be conserved in this example, if kinetic energy is to stay the same as mass is going down, then velocity has to go up during this process, and in fact, it does. This is what's able to take maybe 10 meters per second of hand movement and take it to 400 meters per second, or over 900 miles per hour. This, of course, breaks the sound barrier, which is 343 meters per second in normal Earth circumstances, and this creates the tiny sonic boom at the end of the whip way before a bullet or a fighter jet could even think about doing so. This was the answer to Mr. D's tricky question. The tapering of a whip is key, and we've all seen what it allows a whip to do with the resulting velocity, aside from making guys with ponytails look cool for a few minutes at the Ren Faire. But velocity is just one component of kinetic energy. What if we mess around with the mass of a whip? By my calculations, and according to videos I've seen on the internet, if we change the mass of a bullwhip, it should be able to make it quite a bit more robust and super duper dangerous. I'm not a super villain. Aria, please take us to the surface and contact Thea. Didn't she cut a guy in half once? <laughs> she did. Yeah, she did. She is one scare cool. She's a very cool lady. Thea Ulrich is a friend and former minion of mine who, in addition to being an all-around badass lady, is also a fantastic welder. I am neither of those things. So we are going to her shop today to build 
a bull whip made entirely out of steel. And then we're gonna try to whip stuff and whip it good. With science though. The increased mass of the steel in comparison to something like leather should result in something pretty snappy. Hey, Thea. Hey, Kyle. I want you to help me build something really ridiculous today. You wanna to know what it is? I dread to think, but tell me. A steel bull whip. Wow. <laughs> Do you think we can pull something like that off? Um, I think we can, you know what? How, how do you think we're gonna do that though? So, if you want to make a bull whip out of steel, I think we have to go with chains. We want it to look badass, and we need it to function and have a whip action at the end. So it's gonna have to taper down. So, luckily, I actually have a couple of different types and thicknesses of chain here at the shop. How did you prepare these chains? So what I had to do is I actually bathed these chains in a bath of muriatic acid to strip away the coating on the chains. I left the chains in the bath of acid for a while, and then I neutralized it with baking soda to make it safe to pull the chains out and get them ready to make our whip. Now what would happen if you didn't bathe these chains in acid, then you started working on them? We would breathe a lot of incredibly toxic fumes and get incredibly sick. <laughs> oh, so not so bad then. So uh, how are you going to attach the different tapering lengths together? So here's the plan. I'm going to cut through one side of the chain with my plasma cutting torch and also I'm gonna be using an angle grinder. I'm gonna cut through one little length of chain and then I'm going to heat up a part of the chain over here until it's nice and red, red to yellow hot. I'm gonna twist open the chain, pull off these links, and then slide on a different smaller chain. And we're gonna go all the way from this incredibly beefy chain, which is five eighths of an inch thick, down to this super teeny tiny chain, which hopefully is thin enough and therefore will whip around fast enough to cut through some, well, I'll leave it as a surprise. <laughs> so that sounds great. What can I do to help? Um, I think it'd be best if you just let me handle this part. So when you're changing the form of metal, the most important thing is to move quickly because you will start losing heat as soon as you take the heat away from it. So you have to move super fast and pre-set all of the different tools you're gonna to be using so you can crank that while it's hot. Now that we've cut one link of the chain, I'm going to go and get a smaller chain because we wanna start that nice taper and I'm going to hook it onto this link I'm gonna reheat up this link, close it, and then the last trick of the day will be me welding this link back. It will be just like new. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now I'm sure you've probably seen a bull whip cut through paper and extinguish candles and be set on fire, but this is something else altogether. Thea and I reckon that this is gonna make for a much more exciting demonstration. But what should we demonstrate on? Well, as you know, my parents were taken from me at a, at a young age. We were exiting the opera one night and uh, an orange came up to my mother and said, have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? And then, uh, so the first thing we're gonna test on is an orange. I'm not Batman. What do you think it's gonna do when I hit that orange? Hopefully make it explode. That's what I want too. For There's one way to find out. There's one way to find out. All right, stand back. I'm going to test this stuff. <laughs> that is perfect in half cut. <laughs> Directly. <yeah. laughs> Do you know what this means? More stuff. It's go time. That's no joke. That is no joke. <laughs> I 
think it worked incredibly well. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Straight in half. It's I mean, I wouldn't want to be. I wouldn't want to be on the wrong end of it. No, and I should. I should stress. This bill was kind of dangerous in that that thing hit my foot a couple times, and you do not want to be on the business end. But uh, I'm going to take that back with me. For I do I I, I think I'm going to not research, ask. For research, for research, yeah, yeah. You can have it. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. Today, especially, I want to recognize research assistant Mike Mayer and visiting scholar Daniel Hawk. If you want to get on the staff of the facility, if you want to join us today where over a thousand nerds are talking with me 24-7 on Discord, giving me episode ideas, sharing uh, videos of their tarantulas molting, having their own game nights and radio stations, it's a lot of fun. You can go to patreon.com slash kylehill and join today. And if you support the staff just enough and the facility, you get your name on RA here each and every week. And as you can see, there are hundreds and hundreds of you, so I have no idea how to pass the... To, you should follow Thea. She is so badass and so cool and so talented, and she cut a guy in half once. What's not to like? Go to her Instagram and her YouTube channel, which is recently launched, and go follow her there. I'm, I'm ordering you. Go there and give her the facility bump, which I'm not sure if that sounds right. Thanks for watching. <laughs>